Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at some absolutely enormous rendering upgrades we have seen in Super Mario Odyssey and many other games on this Nintendo Switch emulator. So this weird fisheye or lensing effect is something that players of this emulator and this game have had to put up with for months, basically since this game has become playable. I am happy to announce that in the latest Canary versions of this emulator, you are going to see that this fisheye or lensing effect is completely fixed, giving us an absolutely perfectly and non-distorted game image. These new rendering upgrades have also given us much improved skyboxes as you can see in the skybox right here in Cloud Kingdom. We have also seen massively significant improvements to how many of the sub areas in the games are rendered. Let's take a look at this one right here in cloud. So once I move up to the center of this platform and look around, you are going to see that this area has seen a massive improvement in render quality. Just look at how well our skybox is rendered. It really is absolutely mind blowing when you look at how well the game is now being rendered, especially so when you get up close and personal with any of the character models. Let's jump across to Sand Kingdom and take a look at some new graphical upgrades we've seen there also. So the first two graphical upgrades we've seen in this kingdom and pretty much every kingdom to be honest is the fact that we now have correctly rendered smoke that comes out of this pipe and you can also see that the reflection in the window of the odyssey ship is now correctly showing exactly what it's meant to taking a look around out into sand kingdom you can see that this window reflection is now showing exactly what it is meant to so next onto the next major graphical upgrade they have completely fixed the culling and non-rendering of shadows when you approach them in previous versions of Yuzu Emulator, as you're going to see on screen right now, these shadows would previously not render correctly, especially so when your character approached them. Now, this graphical bug with the shadow not being rendered correctly didn't just happen with this shadow of the Odyssey ship, it basically happened with every single major shadow in the game and it was definitely one of the most annoying glitches or bugs that I have come across in any of my testing. Next up, we're going to be jumping across to Cap Kingdom where we're going to be taking a look at even more graphical and render upgrades. So here in Cap Kingdom, you can now see that they have correctly rendered particles in the air. These little shimmering lights and particles are definitely something that was missing from this kingdom. However, the most major upgrade we have seen not just in this kingdom, but in pretty much every kingdom that contains capture mechanics. As you'll see when I go to capture this frog, they have now completely fixed the rendering of Mario's dematerialization when he performs a capture. These little upgrades to these kind of rendering effects are definitely huge things, at least for me, because having played the game so much on the Nintendo Switch, these effects being missing just kind of broke the game's immersion for me. Let's move further into Cap Kingdom and take a look at some more rendering upgrades. Before we take a look at one of the more major upgrades in this kingdom, they have also added correct rendering of fire to these torches. Now sometimes, oddly enough, it does seem to disappear when you rotate your camera but hopefully this can be fixed very, very soon. Moving on to, at least for me, one of the most major rendering upgrades, when we get to the top of Cap Tower, they have now completely fixed the completely broken bloom that was present in this area. In the last build, you can see that this area was completely broken when Mario was standing on it. Thankfully, this is now completely fixed and rendering much, much better. So for the next rendering upgrade, we're going to be taking a look at one of the sub areas right here in Cap Kingdom. This footage right here is of the very last canary build before this one. You can see just how bad the vertex and fisheye lensing effects are, even when the fisheye effect is not happening on screen. When we transition over to this latest canary build, you can see just how much of a rendering improvement we've seen in this area. We have absolutely zero graphical errors happening here right now. This sub area and many other sub areas in the game are now perfectly being rendered. One of the best examples of these sub area fixes can be seen right here in this area in Sand Kingdom. You can see just how badly the graphics were broken here. 
previously it was this horrible, horrible flickering and flashing mess, you can also see that the sand in the center of this area is not being rendered correctly and the level just looks wrong. However, when we transition over into this latest Canary build version, you can see just how much of an improvement we have seen. The sand is now rendered correctly, all of these particles from the sand falling down from above are now being correctly rendered. The blending of these icicles coming up from this darkness is now absolutely perfect. And when we take a look at this entire sub area as a whole, it just looks 100 times better. Let's quickly jump over into Lake Kingdom and take a look at these next few graphical upgrades. In order to see these improvements, we're going to need to take a quick dive, so let's just jump into the water and get Mario below the surface. Once here, you can clearly see that all of these colourful fish are now being properly rendered, even though on the Nintendo Switch they are supposed to be moving, hopefully this will also be fixed in Yuzu soon. You can also see that, I'm not really sure what it is to be honest, I always thought it was a net but upon closer inspection it looks to be like the bottom of a dress or something, but this is also now being correctly rendered in Super Mario Odyssey. Unfortunately at this point in time, as with the flame lanterns we saw earlier on in the video, this effect actually disappears somewhat when you move your camera at certain angles, hopefully this will also be fixed very soon. Now as well as all of the stuff we've already covered, there are an absolute ton of smaller effects for example like these particle effects on these birds. If you find anything new that's being rendered in any of these new canary builds, do let me know down in the comment section below. Let's move swiftly on and take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild where we have seen an absolutely enormous improvement to the rendering quality. So here we are in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Yuzu emulator and as you can see we have seen an absolutely huge improvement. If you'd followed any of the progress from the last time I covered Breath of the Wild, probably about 5 or 6 days ago, we had seen a render improvement where Link was kind of visible but he was all completely blacked out and basically performance wise it was running at around 5 to 6 frames per second, however right here in Hyrule Castle, pretty much the most demanding area of the entire game, we're running at anywhere between around 8 and 15 frames per second and even though the render quality isn't exactly perfect, this is mainly due to the fact that the shadows are just completely broken. When we pause our game and come into the menus, you can see that all of the models and all of these different icons are now being absolutely perfectly rendered and navigation through these menus is also now absolutely perfect. Performance wise in these menus at least, we get anywhere between around 20 and 30 frames per second. Coming back into actual gameplay, you can see that while the graphics do look like they're completely bugged out, a lot of these problems are actually related to how the shadows are being rendered. You can see that when we do Revali's Gale and I jump up into the air, he is also, well at least his spirit form is being correctly rendered, and when we paraglide over here towards the sanctum where the final boss battle would happen in this game, you can also see that once the shadows are not being rendered in a selected area, that area doesn't actually look too bad at all. Hopefully when we get these shadows fixed, this game will be rendering and in a much, much more playable state. Blinkhawk, the developer that gave us all of these render upgrades in Breath of the Wild, also gave us the lensing or fisheye effect in Super Mario Odyssey and he has also told us that he is going to be taking a special interest in games like Breath of the Wild and Octopath Traveler in the coming days and weeks, so hopefully in that time frame we will see major upgrades in those games also. Ok, so let's move on to our next title we're going to be covering in this video, let's take a look at Sonic Forces. This game is another one that has actually been booting in Yuzu emulator for quite a large amount of time. We could even get in game for probably the last 4 or 5 weeks, however we were not getting any rendered 3D graphical output at all. You can now see that these title menus are now being correctly rendered, we also have fonts in this game. Unfortunately this introduction cutscene does not play but when we get into gameplay you're going to see that at least initially we'll have some kind of graphics rendered but we can actually fix this by using the accurate GPU emulation option. So in order to use this setting all you have to do is you have to come up to the emulation tab in the very top of Yuzu, click on emulation, you want to come to configure and then you want to come across to this graphics tab. Once you're in this graphics tab, turn on accurate GPU emulation like you saw me do right there and once you do that you should see that you have somewhat accurately rendered 3D graphics. 
Obviously, it's not perfect since this is the first time that this game has ever shown 3D graphics, but to be honest, especially since we're using accurate GPU emulation and this option usually absolutely destroys your performance, and when you consider that we are running the game at anywhere between around 15 and 20 frames per second, it's actually not too bad, especially as I said for the first time booting this game. So as I always say at the ends of these videos guys, if you want to help with the development of this Switch emulator, please, please please do head on over to their Patreon page and pledge to support them. You'll find a link to that down in the description of this video. I think we can all agree that with the absolutely mind-blowing progress we have seen in the past few weeks and months, this emulator and its developers most definitely deserve our support. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video. Remember to like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.